Hello, um, I'm Peter Robinson, but I think that's I think I'm relatively well known these days. Um, I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to give an overview of ARM in Fedora, and I'm not really going to separate ARM out ART64 or ARMv7, because basically we're slowly pushing them forward as um, not an individual platform, but you know they are moving forward all pretty quickly in there. Um, so I'm going to cover off user space status of both hardware support and um, what seems to be the most controversial thing, um, the Koji builders. Um, so user space. Um, the Ambu 7 user space is extremely complete. Um, there's very little delta um, and it's now just in a state of general evolution. Um, you know, some areas of it are slightly buggier and slightly less op optimal than x86, but there's other areas that are probably better than x86. Um, and so we're now really just in a state of in improvement of use cases and bits and pieces surrounding that and the use cases that interest um, people that are interested in ARM devices like Internet of Things style devices, Maker, people, you know, 3D printer support and various other bits and pieces. Um, and so ultimately you should get a, an extremely standard out of the box Fedora experience just like on x86 um, where you can basically get a device up and running pretty quickly um, and start hacking on bits that interest you. And we're always interested in improved use cases. Um, I'm constantly speaking to people um, about things like Internet of Things devices. Um, I'm starting to look at like some of my own interest space in sort of um, small sensor devices and W pans um, and, and bits and pieces like that. So um, we've gone from the crazy having to deal with uh, GCC toolchain problems and um, various other bring up issues to um, GFC terrible <laughs> thing. Um, <laughs> watch out, John. Um, yes, to um, you know, basically the minority of improving a generic distro, um, and you know, there's well over fifteen thousand source packages in Fedora mainline these days which equates to, I think, something to the tune of um, somewhere between 50 and 100,000 uh, binary RPMs. So it, it's pretty epic. Um, in the ARC64 space, um, the bring up of the user space is well and truly complete. Um, the core tool chains and everything else is there. We're still sort of occasionally running into some interesting tool chain bugs. Um, and regressions and improvements that are happening, but it's evolving pretty fast and we're working with the tool chain teams and various other bits and pieces um, as those issues come up. Um, in terms of core languages, um, we're almost complete. Um, the main ones that are missing are Golang, um, which is a fairly standard problem across all of the secondary arches, and it's something that um, we're actively discussing. Uh, I have an update on that. So I talked to Jeff Law and Matt Newsom from the platform team yesterday and today, and Jeff says for Eric 64, GCC Go is in place and ready for Fedora for Eric 64. So what has to happen now is not our responsibility, but the packagers yep. to build Docker, GearD, and Audit. You just need to switch to GCC Go as your build dependency, yep. and if something breaks, then come talk to us. It is all broken, so we'll... Have you tried switching it? <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you didn't tell me that yesterday. <laughs> I, I, did actually, I did, actually. I did, but anyway. Uh, as a, as a, as Back a, to work, to work Carla. Uh, <laughs> but, but anyway, the, these are just, you know, things that are evolving, and, and you know, it, this is not new to ARC64. We have the same problem on PPC and S390 as well. Um, and it's a generally known problem that uh, the secondary architecture community as a whole is discussing. Um, and um, so the V8 uh, JavaStream engine has upstream support, um, but Fedora is stuck on quite an ancient version. Um, and as far as I can tell, that's because of Mongo and Node.js and, 
and maybe, but not definitely, chromium. But we're sort of trying to work around or work out how we're going to resolve that issue. Um, and then there's mono support. But then, you know, the mono support in x86 is pretty rubbish on Fedora anyway. It's pretty much unmaintained, and someone really needs to just pick that up in general and run with it. Um, throw it away. So I've just noticed an error in my slides here. It's not 4K packages. We're missing less than 400 packages. Uh, the last time I looked, it was about 350 source packages out of the 15,000 in um, Fedora. Most of them are things like dependencies around the Golang mono and, and other bits and pieces. Um, there's some more obscure stuff like D, Prolog, um, and um, Fortran, uh, not Fortran, we have Fortran, um, Pascal and various other bits and pieces. Um, we'll get there eventually. I mean, they're not high priority. If anyone's interested in them, let me know and um, I'll help you get it fixed. Um, so now we're very much on to the um, test, fix, optimize, um, wash, rinse, repeat phase in that case. As, as John demoed earlier, um, it's there, it boots, it works relatively nicely and is surprisingly stable given the somewhat beta nature of a lot of the hardware out there at the moment. Progressing right on to the hardware support. I'll cover ARM um, 64 first because that's all the shiny shiny that everyone likes to hear about. Um, for alpha out of the box or for F21 alpha out of the box for those that may be watching this on YouTube in a year or two more. <laughs> um, we support two hardware platforms out of the box um, through the SBSA UEFI ACPI support, which is um, the XG <laughs> Mustang support and the Seattle AMD Seattle. Um, the Cavium Thunder X stuff is coming in the F21 cycle. But I don't believe they're actually shipping hardware yet, so I think by the time hardware actually becomes available, um, we'll already have the support in place. Both of the first two have been booted as well. They're not, it's not aspirational that it's written. No, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. We know it we works. Know, we know it works. Yeah. And you know, there, there is bits and pieces missing in that PCI support um, and some of the other sort of um, but network, storage, all the usual things that you need to make a server-based platform useful is there. And ultimately, um, there's, I've been watching the 317 uh, Linus git commits really closely and there's huge amounts more stuff coming in 317. <laughs> so it, it's evolving, it's evolving very quickly. Um, and as the features land upstream, we obviously get them straight away in Fedora. Um, for those that aren't lucky enough to have three grand US or so to spank on some new shiny toys, um, we have Quimu for ARC64 on x86 in place. Um, and we just need to work out all the bits of glue, um, hoping to have that up and running in a means that people can use it in the F21 alpha phases, maybe a bit later on beta, but it's pretty much all there, we just have to work out exactly the little bits and pieces and, and tweak the options as we go. Um, but there are people actively working on that. Um, there's of course the um, foundation model, um, but it's slow and proprietary and I suggest that the Queen Moon model will obsolete yeah. that very quickly. There's some work that, that is going to be announced in the due course about getting other remote hardware people can log into. Yeah, but I mean that's um, sort of um, yeah. Yeah. detail. Yeah. But I mean ultimately changes here is going like it's been building up for over three years for the hardware to become available. It's now just starting to become available and it's suddenly going to move really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And with things like the SBSA support, um, similar to x86 as new devices come on board, um, it should be out of the box and it will be then little bits and pieces like whether the NIC driver is upstream or not, um, and things like that, that will be. Um, but like in the case of the caveat stuff, most of all the drivers and things like that are already upstream. Um, Cute embedded nonsense hacks. Well, as John said, he only cares about server stuff, and the SBSA is all dedicated towards server. 
Um, and obviously, AART64 is not just about the server, but there will be various other boards, dev boards, various other bits and pieces, um, or winner in China, which is one of the largest um, um, SOC shippers in the world, um, has said that they're doing um, um, V8 devices, and in the embedded space, um, and dev board space and various other bits and pieces, we know there are vendors out there that aren't bothered with UEFI and stuff like that. So Fedora, unlike whatever enterprise-based products, will continue to support new board in um, VA AIP64 simply because there are a number of use cases that aren't covered by the SBSA that Fedora as a distribution um, that likes cute embedded nonsense hacks um, will continue to support. So, um, you know, the, it's a fact of the matter in the ARM ecosystem that U-Boot is there, it's going to continue to be there and will continue to support it. I mean, ultimately in terms of um, should, su support of it, um, Dennis Gilmore and others have been working hard to get a relatively nice, relatively standard dis generic distro support into U-Boot so that when new chips come along and new vendors come along, if they just support that and it's well documented upstream in U-Boot, um, it should be relatively easy now um, for us to add support for that. And the support in terms of U-Boot is a lot less like hell than it was even six to 12 months ago. Um, which brings me nicely onto um, v 7 um, We did in F20, um, have a single multi-platform unified kernel. Woohoo! Um, um, it's been a long, hard road. Um, I know I have a lot more grey hair dealing with this particular topic, and I now know a lot more about kernel stuff than I ever thought I wanted to know. Um, we were the first distro to support it. Um, there are other distros out there that still ship multiple kernels, and they are, I not, mean... Not extreme kernels, just random yeah, kernels. just random kernels, and, you know, 12, 18 months ago, we were in our own little hell having to try and support upstream multiple kernels. Now we are in, not quite Nirvana, but a lot closer to Nirvana now, and the stress is a lot less, and um, those other distros get to deal with um, that hell that I used to need to deal with. Um, so we've got about 16 system on a chip that currently enabled, uh, way too many to list. Um, obviously some of the SOCs have supported better the art than others, but it's improving really, really quickly. Um, as our driver support and various other bits and pieces, <coughs> um, we now only support uh, devices that are compute embedded nonsense hacks, <laughs> i.e. we only support booting on device tree at the moment, um, and... No one's yeah. going to care about ACP on a V7, does No, it? And, and I mean, and we, like, we don't enable any current board devices, um, and basically, if people come along and go, I can't boot, support, booting my boards of device, it's just like, well, we don't support anything but device tree. If it works for you, good. Um, if not, Sorry. Um, so, <coughs> the devices that will be supported in F21 will be an order of magnitude different to F20. I think when we shipped F20, we supported maybe half a dozen devices. Um, our course SOC support will include the IMX6, Tegra, the AN3300, uh, which is basically um, Beagle boards and similar devices, and there's a number of very because the Beagle board is open hardware. There's a number of variants starting to come out surrounding that, which is kind of cool. Um, OMAP, although it's which used to be one of our primary devices, um, is being defocused, but there's a lot of devices out there. Um, All winner and Versatile Express, primarily through Kwimu, um, with a bunch of secondary stuff. Um, our exact um, like tier one supported level of devices um, is still being finalised, and that will be sort of more finalised around the beta time frame. 
but you know some of the core devices will be the people voting black like I've just shown uh, the new uh, Jetson uh, board which we're working with um, the NVIDIA guys are actively involved in the ARM community um, testing that and making sure um, plus you know a whole bunch of the IMX6 stuff um, the uh, Sean from Navina um, managed to basically add a device tree for his cool open source laptop and basically booted Fedora out of the box um, using standard uh, kernel um, and you know a whole bunch of other devices I mean at the moment with the 316 kernel we're shipping 190 odd device trees um, and when I go <coughs> through the list of those there's a whole bunch of stuff and you know it should be relatively easy to boot um, F21 on well over 100 boards um, so you know and I suspect that'll be closer to 150 to 200 um, so you know in, in that regard it's an order of magnitude different than it was just a year ago. Um, the big one I'm always asked about, um, GPU support. Um, all the bits are finally starting to fall in place um, with regards to open drivers. Um, the NVIDIA guys with the um, Tegra K1 devices support uh, their Kepler GPUs, which is similar to what's on x86 and it will support Nuvo and Meza and everything else. And so we should have, and I'm hoping in the next week or so, or in the next couple of weeks when I actually get some spare cycles, we should pretty much have, um, whether it's all upstream just yet, um, but we should have it running. Um, the Etna Viv, which is the Vivanti GPUs, um, I believe now, um, speaking with Sean and others, um, most of the support is basically in place. It's not upstream yet, but again, I'm going to be pulling that in and we should have full sort of gnome shell or, or pretty close to. Um, so I'm hoping by the time we get to sort of um, F21 GA, a lot of that should just work. Um, the free Drino stuff with um, Rob, I'm really glad. Rob Clark, um, he's actively working on that in Fedora. Um, the support for the SOC stuff has now been enabled in the kernel and the actual kernel support is improving. Um, so in terms of graphics stuff and that, um, we're starting to get a bunch of really nice devices. The IMX6 stuff, um, when that finally, when all the little bits of glue and what have you are in place over the next couple of months, there should be probably 20 odd devices ranging from 30 odd bucks right up to, um, to give some really, really nice uh, low to middle end hardware, um, it's got fairly serious video offload and stuff like that. Um, and so we've got some fairly cheap, fairly compelling platforms that are coming we're along quite nicely. We're going to test um, discrete PCI graphics cards soon, just for, just for good, good, for me good measure. Yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> uh, Peter, uh, just a good question about the graphics cards. Um, the Mali stuff is still like, um, fuck it, right? I mean, yes. Okay. So. Uh, um, there has been a number of rumours about that. The Lima, the Lima project um, is working on it. They have Quake running, um, I, which seems to be one of those. Woo! We can run Quake. Yeah. Now we can play games, and we'll like uh, stop working on it. So it's, they're, they're still working on it in terms of a two D DDX driver and a three D Meza driver. Um, there's like in last year's slides, I actually had Lima there in the hope that it would be right. in place by flock this year. Um, it doesn't seem to have progressed that much in the last year. the Mali year. guys are not interested at all, right? Um, in open sourcing their stuff. They are very interested in not being in open sourcing. Oh, well, right. it, it depends on who you speak to. Like, okay. um, there's nothing being publicly announced. Um, everyone says, I hope, I hope, I hope. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I suspect if there's any wish there, um, there's probably <coughs> legal teams and various uh, other bits and pieces fighting in the opposite direction. Which which uh, sucks use Lima. Um, so Lima or Mali is yeah. the arm um, um, out of the box GPU. GPU that you can buy. Um, the Exynos, so Samsung devices oh, use that. 
Um, and then there's a whole bunch of random other, so um, I think the rock chip stuff uses it. Um, it pops up in different from different vendors. Like in some of the all winner stuff uses um, Mali, other of the all winner stuff uses um, Amation XGS stuff. Just one, um, one uh, the only all winner A51 is using Power VR. No, the there are. The rest is using Mali. No, there are others out there now oh. that have it as well. Um, but even in the case of um, the Mali devices um, and the SGX stuff as well, um, if they've got a KMS driver in the kernel, um, we can do basic 2D mode settings. Um, yeah. So like the, the Beagle board um, of the Beagle bone has an SGX um, as does, but you know, some people have the um, the Samsung Chromebooks, I mean, with, and there is some marginally hardware accelerated yeah. drivers there, but they're fairly average. Yeah, and, I, and I think with, like, there's like a rumoured that's hit a number in the last day or so, a number of um, websites, and when I asked um, Stephen on Pound Fedora Arm about this Chromebook, with four gig of RAM and a 1080 screen and all sorts of bits and pieces from Acer, he's like, it's not, there's no publicly announced Chromebook and I can't say anything more. But <laughs> um, in terms of that, I'm hoping that some of the Tegra K1 stuff, which has standard <coughs> Nuvo drivers and that, should start to um, filter out into the wild soon and I'm hoping that it's not too locked down um, that, and that we can nicely support some of that okay. stuff and that basically um, the other vendors can, well, you know, go and do whatever. <laughs> um, so other hardware support, I mean, now that we've got some really good core SOC support, basic boot and everything else, um, we're starting to look at a lot of the other periphery stuff, um, media, sound, um, a lot of these ARM devices to keep the power low have extremely nice hardware enabled offload engines for sound and video and various other stuff. Um, GPIO, FPGA is just like that ships in the Novena laptop. Um, you know, things like the crypto cape um, that we can plug into the Google um, bone. Um, there's all sorts of interesting, <coughs> weird and wonderful stuff out that, there that we're starting to test. And ultimately, if anyone that's interested in that sort of stuff come along to the mailing list or um, to the IRC channel and we'll help get it enabled. I mean, if we don't, if it's upstream and we don't actually have it enabled in the kernel, we can help you out there. Um, there's all sorts of other weird and wonderful bits that we're not necessarily looking at, like CAN drivers, uh, uh, which is car area network, um, because while I cringe at the idea of Microsoft running on a car area network, um, I'm not sure what the value of Fedora is because I'm not sure you should be using a CLI driving down the road. <laughs> um, so, but you know, there's crypto offload engines um, and various other bits and pieces that are all uh, the supports coming along for. Um, and so we're now really crossing the I's, dotting the T's and enabling as much or ensuring um, all sorts of... I have a bug report. Yeah? <laughs> you should dot I's and cross T's. <laughs> I say that. No, no, I say that everywhere to see who picks it up. I've been in customer meetings and they just sit there and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't pick it up. And I always go, yes. <laughs> so, um, brings me on to the lovely topic of Koji and a number of memes sort of flying around in there, and I didn't actually manage to grab one of them to put into my slides. But, you know, of skeletons sitting in chairs going, I got an uh, arm builder. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, ultimately, they're slow. I always complain about this. But, you know, you guys didn't have to do um, a GCC compile on an emulated ARM v8 platform that took three weeks to do. <laughs> <laughs> that would shit itself two and a half weeks into the build because of some bug that you would have to then kick it off again and go, maybe I should just go and sit on the beach for a bit. <laughs> um, you know, ultimately, 
And I mean, when we did the ARMV, like the initial ARM32 bring up, we were, you know, using one giga, dual core one gigahertz devices with one gig of RAM. We're moving forward. The plan is to move everything to ARMv8 64-bit builders. Now we've got, we've done some testing on the hardware that's out there, which is beta and not fully optimized yet. And the GCC builds run faster than an x86-64. So I'm hoping this time next year, the skeletons are going to be for x86 platforms. <laughs> but to get there, we've got a way to go. Um, we've got to get commercial hardware that is supported with vendor support, where we could, when it ships itself, um, the guys in Red Hat that support the hardware can pick up the phone and go, hey vendor, come out and replace your broken hardware. We're not there yet. Um, so close though, so close. Yeah, so close, and then it will start shipping in volume, and eventually sometime in the next six to 12 months we'll actually get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been hearing so close for so long. But now it's right there. Um, <laughs> but once, once we have that, we need to do some other things to get there. And this is all the sort of stuff we're starting to deal with now. Now that we actually have hardware that we can run hardware virtualization on and things like that. Um, even with ARM32, we get ARMv8L. Um, we build for ARMv7. Um, so we need to test Koji, YAM, DNF, um, RPM, mock, and all those environments to make sure that we can go through and build um, everything that will still run on the right hardware. We, so we need to go through and verify tool chains. Um, we need to verify that the virtualization so that we can basically deploy vert builders um, in v 7 and an ARTS32 format on the same hardware. We need to make sure that works and is stable and produces properly consumable binaries yeah. by standard hardware. Um, so as we get the hardware that is not production release vendor ready support, we're now starting to test that and I'll be sitting there doing, once we have those platforms up and running, sort of mass rebuilds behind the scenes to stress test that and make sure everything that we produce comes out nice um, and works and we don't have regressions and we don't have horrible, horrible other assumptions that are made, which is ultimately what we'll need to deal with. Um, so I we, hope... By the way, we've actually used um, some, of the, uh, some of the early 64-bit hardware. Um, I, we would go into a lab where a new chip has happened and, and uh, do a Fedora mass rebuild as a stress test for the silicon. Yeah. And um, you know, nothing like stressing it, like doing exactly. it right away. And I mean, vendors out there, if you want someone to really stress test your silicon, <laughs> we'll find your uh, bugs. <laughs> we'll we'll find all your bugs and all your problems, um, and then you can make them go away. Um, but yeah, so ultimately, I'm hoping um, all of those pieces in the puzzle, both the software wise um, and the hardware wise, um, should sort of in the next six months or so, so it won't be in the F21 cycle, but I'm hoping that well and truly before we hit anything serious in the F22 cycle, um, the problem of ARM slow builders is a distant, distant, horrible memory in the past. Um, it's something we're very aware of. Believe me, I have spent hours sitting there waiting for builds to happen. So, as bad as it is for you guys, it is an order of magnitude worse for me. <laughs> um, so, I mean, in the last four years, we've come a long way um, since um, Seneca took over the original um, B5 stuff. Um, Fedora 20 was a major milestone for ARMv7, um, and I think personally for Fedora as a project in general. I mean, it's the first time we've in re or introduced a new architecture um, the introduction of that architecture has, you know, bought out bugs in x86. I mean, the secondary arches platforms, as um, Phil was saying in his secondary arch talk, um, identifies bugs regularly that are an issue on x86. I mean, one of the examples was um, there's a bug, I think, in GCC um, that is a bug across all architectures. Um, but triggers instantaneously on S390. 
And so next week, Dennis and the Relange team, um, which as of very soon is actually going to include me as well. Um, <laughs> amusingly working on something other than arm. Um, <laughs> Says the IBM Power PC guys in the room clapping. There's <laughs> um, a guy up front that. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, I'll, I'll be around Fedora a hell of a lot more because for the first time ever I'll actually be paid to work on Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> Which means for the, for, for, for the first time in a little while I'll actually have to work out what to do in my spare time. <laughs> No, that is not the option. Um, you know, so I mean, and so you know, ultimately, because of a non-x86 um, architecture, where, or because of non-x86 architectures, we find bugs that affect x86 as well. And unfortunately, we're going to have to do a partial mass rebuild of both f21 and f22. Um, but the nice thing is, is that we found it before alpha. We don't have to do this two weeks before GA um, and things like that. So as much as not everyone agrees, um, non-x86 architectures add massive value even to x86 in the Fedora landscape. Um, and, you know, like Adam Williamson with his Fedlet has a whole bunch of stuff in x86 device well. And you know, there's x86 um, embedded boards coming out and things like that that are supporting things like I2C and SPI and all sorts of weird ARM style, um, <laughs> yeah. style isms um, that, you know, they don't need to really deal with that much because we as ARM have dealt with it. Um, you know, F21 is going to be huge for ARC64. It's, you know, we're not even anywhere, we're, we're not far from alpha, and ARC64 already looks awesome. So by the time we hit GA, I think, you know, the GA release of ARC64 as secondary will be out pretty soon um, after the mainline stuff, and, you know, hardware will start to become available, and people will be able to use Fedora on it as soon as it arrives. And, and in a lot of cases, they won't even have to um, download and work out how to install it because they'll power it up and the login will be there from, um, from the outset. Um, so how can you guys help? Test and play with hardware is the obvious one. Um, document your experience. Document how you do things. Report bugs. Um, test all the weird and wonderful drivers um, available and all the weird and wonderful features available that myself and people like Paul Whalen, who has 20 boards and boots 20 different boards just about every day um, to make sure the basics work. You know, test HDMI audio. You know, buy a cue box and set it up as your media center and see if all the um, um, fiber audio and surround sound and various other bits work. Um, see how you can help us enable things like the media offload. Um, you know, test your software stacks boot up one of the um, AR64 when it comes available shortly, or um, V7 images using Queen and test it. Um, basically, do what you do on x86 or any other Fedora platform that you run. Um, and because ultimately, every little bit of testing you do um, in the hundreds of thousands of packages that make up Fedora and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of ways of using them all together um, ultimately helps make um, the platform better for both ARM um, and other um, platforms. So that's me. Um, any questions? Yeah, so, um, to build a 32 bit ARM packages on a 64 bit ARM machine, you have to use virtualization or can it be done in a chain group as on x86? Um, I think John can answer that one. You, you, could, you can do either. Um, so, the, I think the reason we're interested in virtualization is that. Um, what what you can do with what you can do then is is get to a world where uh, you can you could go with things like a 64k page size on 64-bit, and you could still run 32-bit.
code by running inside a VM. So you could do either. You could even do a Docker container, probably, if we want to advocate for Docker, it's pretty shiny, right? There's, there's probably ways to do that as well. But I think virtualization is a nice, clear cut yeah, way I mean, for to say, there's no magic that you have to put in Koji to say, oh crap, is there a hidden way that somehow the, the architecture version is getting exposed? You can just lie and say, this is 32-bit, all the Yeah, it's right. To, try, to do an integer today, it's going to need network and RPM and, and, the and YAM and other bits and pieces that, yeah, so it um, could be done, but uh, isn't yeah. it? And ART64 user space and um, made 64 page, 64K page sizes, correct? It, it's, uh, so what we're doing today is, is, is uh, internally we, we build kernel 64K and then um, people that are running Fedora and want to run 32-bit are currently building 4K kernels. So it's unclear which way it's going to go, but the cool thing if you do virtualization isn't going to matter. And I think it's the same reason that on, on x86 all the builders pretty much, I think, are, are virtual machines at this point. Yes, yeah. And I, I don't see why we don't make ARM um, just the same. Yeah, so the plan for Koji, once we have proper hardware, um, is to have um, V7 VMs, um, ART64 VMs running on ART64 hardware, so that we don't have to worry about those. Yeah. And But to boot, say, a 32-bit user space on 64-bit hardware, you'll need a kernel that does 4K page sizes as opposed to 64K page sizes. Um, whether we actually support that in Fedora out of the box in terms of kernels... Um, to be decided. It's to be decided to see whether there's value there or not. Um, we right. will support um, V7 on ART64 uh, KVM images, so there'll be enough kernel support there to deal with that use case scenario, um, and the rest basically will come from demand. Yeah. And um, re remember one thing that not every ARM V8 CPU will be able to run 32B yeah. ARM code, because yeah. this say, support it's is not optional. Right? Okay. Sorry? AR64 is not multi-lift. No. Right? no, and nor is ARM V7, yeah. no. so it, it's just not a use case that we're interested yeah. in supporting. Are there any plans for actual installation or on ARM V7 devices, or will it always be just images? Installation works really well today. Yep. And, uh, on yeah, you, you, far, but yeah. Yep. No, 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 on 32, 32 as well. Yeah, so we have enough memory. That's the. So you, so you have to. We, have to have we, have, we now can go with 320 megabytes. So yeah. I think so. So, um, so um, <laughs> Stephen Warren from Nvidia, who's been the way he tests Fedora on this is to netboot using the Pixie support and install using a kickstart. Um, there will in time, um, there are people that have tested Anaconda installs uh, surrounding some of the U-boot bits, it's a, uh, sorry, device tree bits, it's a bit interesting because you obviously need to be able to select the device tree to do an initial boot and then you can install, but it does work. Oh, that's great. The high, we've only ever supported the high bank systems via Anaconda installs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Anna, Anna, Anaconda Kickstart installs have been supported. Maybe at some point we will need some hardware to test them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could test it on pretty much. You could test it on BeagleBone Black. Yeah. You put DD the U boot on, set up a Pixie tree, and you can Pixie boot and install. Yeah. And can you okay. test it in QMU? You could. Yeah. You um, just have to load so, the installer kernel and. So at the, the moment yeah. on QMU, the issue we have is that we don't have. We boot the kernel directly, we don't yeah. boot you. You, you, have, you, to, you have to go for the direct kernel. You can get the kernel and random. You can get, yeah. the, you get the kernel from the install tree. Yeah. 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 Load it. So, yeah, I mean, that's something we've supported, like going right the way back to um, F17 when we first did the ARMV7 bringer. Peter, uh, what's, the, what's the architecture we are currently using to build the ARM? I mean, which kind of parts do we have? And how many parts? Which and how many? So, in the case of the questions for Koji builders, yes. so the builders we have at the moment are Kalzada High Bank. So, it's ARM A9, um, ARM A9, uh, hot core 1.5 gigahertz, they're about uh, 4 giga RAM, and I think we've got 48 of them, but there's 96 in the racks. We've got 96, 24 are used in the cloud space for proper stuff. 24 used for QA testing and other bits and pieces, row lunchbox yep. and 
whatnot, and then 48 are assigned for building. And that hardware is obviously discontinued, but there will be plenty of other hardware very soon. Yeah, so I mean, the hardware from the Calzada point of view, it wasn't Calzada that shipped the hardware, so we'd still have vendor support through the third party that created that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're very interested in getting it shipped out, uh, swapped out as soon as we can get, um, you know, production ready, vendor supportable AR64 hardware. And I mean, we've already had um, John through um, the um, server side of things is already having those discussions. So as soon as it's available, we'll have it. As soon as it's, uh, as soon as we have it, and. We've got all those other things in place, and of course we're working on that in parallel already. Um, we will be shipping uh, someone out to Phoenix to plug it all in and get it up. So, and because believe me, I mean, there's no one more than me that, and the kernel guys, and the you know all the other Eclipse guys, the Eclipse guys, and the Java guys, and the Workday <laughs> Office guys, and the Firefox guys, and that want that faster hardware. You know, we're very very aware of the problem. Um, and it's, but ultimately the problem is well and truly out of our hands. Yeah. So, anyone else? Carlos. 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 Um, because this is a user space talk, I'll ask the toolchain related question. Um, at some point in the life cycle of most of these SOCs, someone decides that they're going to do something with a new register set that involves an ABI transition. And you know we saw this with the hard flow change, which required some considerable jumping through hoops in user space to yep. ensure that it either worked together or there was a transitional process for you to move to hard flow without everything breaking. Um, how strict is the ARM server, looking at John, uh, with regards to having all the vendors absolutely follow ARM's published EABI standards and not allowing them to add optional features that change the ABI as exposed to well, the Well, that's absolutely forbidden. Okay. That's good to hear. That's, that's I will hunt you down. Okay. <laughs> and, and um, you know, most of the well, things, things, things could be added, but they must no, no, absolutely be made color safe, right? And there are performance implications for that, and I know that hardware partners might say, so they can't, we so just they, fix this for S390 as a secondary arch, which is, you know, hey, we want to break X, because we want to have these registers be uh, saved so in context. The summary there would be, if you, uh, if you wanted to do something like that, pretty architectural, it, ARM would have to drive it, because if somebody, if somebody implemented something like that without ARM being involved, then they would be in violation of the architecture. And um, that would be, you know, that would be a... a Are you issue. in violation of the architecture by not following the published EABI documents? Um, no, for, particularly for AAPCS because it's the functional right, interface. Right, but if you added no, but if you added if you did something weird like added a, added a new register or something like that, yeah. that would be a violation, right? So um, we've we've basically said in the server space you have to conform to published AAPCS 64 stuff, and okay. uh, if you don't conform to it, we don't care about you. Um, so yeah, we're being absolutely, and we've we've worked with ARM and said that is not going to rev, right? Yeah, that can rev once in a over my dead body. Yeah, right? That's basically what, what the feedback is. I mean, ultimately, if there's a need for a rev for whatever reason, like ARM um, being on, it has to be managed. Whatever, yes. It would be managed by ARM um, and presumably also the Nara Enterprise yeah. Group. I mean, they still, would one be, would hope that it would also probably be a new product, perhaps, yeah. a yes. new Fedora spin, so yes. it would be a totally different thing from the previous release. Yeah. So that there's, it would be clear that there's that <coughs> tools and user space would provide. Little to no transition there. You basically have to rebuild because yeah. the ABI is going to be. Different. I don't. I don't see. I think the hard float thing was a was a kind of <coughs> special case. No, but they did a good job. Like it, it yeah, went yeah. well. But like, I think I think the need for it was a special case. Yeah. But um, I I don't see a compelling need to change something. So that's what we've said every, every five time. years. Yeah, and yeah. then yeah. the thing is, with the, the with the life cycles with which we plan to support the server environments. We really need strong no for ABI changes. My that favorite three words: around. shall, will, and must. Yeah. And I've used those yeah. in that context. So okay. that, Thank you. Yeah. Big yeah. step. Yeah. yeah. But, but couldn't it happen that some huge hardware vendor sh shows up and does an embrace and extend thing uh, on you without uh, caring at all about what ARM says? 
then they can play another then, then the software, yeah. then yeah, our software doesn't work and people yeah, I mean, will buy that hardware. Play, if they want to play their own playground, I have a great they can, here. What are you running they can pick it up and... In, in, uh, Fedora, in Fedora, we only we care about you know general purpose stuff. If, if say, Android or something wanted to go and recompile the world in a different way, they could do yeah. that. No problem. They can, and there will be people that do that stuff. We care about being compatible with the other Linux distros, general purpose stuff, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and ABI break it can also be isolated to containers yes. or yeah. you could have a container running Android yeah. that did whatever you like. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, ultimately, we're not interested in, in the likes of say Big MDNR. So that, that, so yeah, so the there, <laughs> I assume there have to be someone who thinks that the arm is. In some way useful for their particular workload, it, but it's but only, only network. It's yeah. called a Blonara network group. Yeah. Um, because ultimately, Ethernet frames a big Indian, and yeah. that's why there's always interest there. Um, but from a general distro point of view, I, I'm not aware of any interest, and there's zero interest. No one's going to build a big if, if someone wants to come and build Fedora for ARM big Indian, they can go nuts, but it's not going to be me doing it. Yeah, and we never supported the BE8 and B32 32 bit arm variants no. either. So. We'll track them down and tie them up somewhere as well. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> and have John sing at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I think that's it. One more. Oh. Are, you, are you awesome or are you awesomely awesome? Uh, that's the same thing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>